And hi everyone in smoky Portland. I'm coming to you from smoky San Francisco and um, ready for story time. So my book is Morning Sunshine and I'm going to read you some of this this morning and then I'm going to read you another one of my favorite books and then we're going to do a fun facts nature quiz. So starting off, Morning Sunshine. It's what we want to see more of, right? This book is written by me, Keely Parrott. I'm the author and it's illustrated. These beautiful illustrations were done by John Budget. John Budget also did Baby Shark. I don't know if you've heard of Baby Shark. But he did the illustrations for that too. This book is kind of an unusual book whoop, in that it's kind of three books in one because on one side, it has a kind of poem called a haiku, and on the other side, it has nonfiction facts about the haiku. So if you really love poetry, you can just read through all the haiku. And if you really love nonfiction and you really love finding out facts about things, you can just read the fact part. If you love them both, you can read them both at the same time. This morning, I'm just mostly going to read you the haiku. So, are you ready? Morning Sunshine, dedicated to Adam and Luca, my sunshine every day. That's my husband and my son. You get a little bit closer so you can see. Morning Sunshine by Keely Parrick, illustrated by John Paget. This book starts very early, very, very early in the morning. Can you see how dark it is? Bird song fills the air. Harmonies and melodies welcome in the dawn. Have you ever woken up so early that you're not sure if it's morning yet and you can hear all the birds singing? All the birds singing is called the dawn chorus. That's when the birds wake up and want to check in on each other and let them know that they're okay and awake. Startled moths flutter, searching for safe places to rest before sunrise. The moths have been up all night and they're getting ready to go to bed. You can see here some city and you can see a few lights of people who have to get up early. Quiver ears, cottontail, skitter scatter, leaping with delight. It's a rabbit in the country. One of the really fun facts that I learned when I was researching this is um, about rabbits. I don't know if you've ever seen when you get near a rabbit, sometimes they run away, but sometimes you'll see them leaping in the air and kind of twisting at the same time. And um, I found out that wild rabbits and pet rabbits do this and they do it just for fun, just for pure delight. And it's called a binky, which I thought was really fun. So if you have a pet rabbit doing that, you know what it is now. Silver paths crisscross, snails and slugs sliver away, seeking damp spaces. You can just see little bits of light on their silver trails. A flock of crows takes to the sky, black capes flapping, beaks, caw, caw, cawing. You can see the sun just a little bit on his beak and his head. You can see more lights on and just here, you can see a tiny bit of sunlight coming up. The sky's not as dark as it was at the beginning. Silent in shadow, a shy footed, flick tailed deer steps into morning. That actually happened to me. That's how I wrote this haiku. It was just an amazing thing. I went down to the end of where we live where there's a bit of scrubland. So I really wanted to see what animals get up that early in the morning before the sun has risen. And I was watching and I was walking along near a tree and near a piece of lake and 
suddenly, as if from nowhere, two deer stepped out. And it was amazing. It was like, how on earth did they step out? And where did they step out from? And so this haiku, silent in shadow, that's really what happened. It really did step out into morning. So it practically wrote itself. And here you can see John has made the sun come up a little bit more. So you can see the sunlight a bit more. Tiny hummingbird hovers in the orange tree, sipping sweet blossoms. Mm. Hummingbirds are so sweet, so tiny. Black beetle scurries between plant pots and pebbles, racing for the leaves. Here you can see a little bit of shine, a bit more sun and a little bit more shine as the sun is slowly rising. A dumpling robin hops along the garden fence on his matchstick legs. I found out that robins and I think crows and some other birds that hop around, there's no actual reason for them to hop other than sometimes just for fun. Animals sometimes play just like we do. Shimmer dewdrops cling to strands of silk perfection. Spider lies in wait. I wonder what she'll catch. There's a lot of spider's webs starting around now. Autumn is a wonderful time to see spider's webs, especially first thing in the morning where you'll see them kind of glistening with the dew drops. A faint blush of light spreads across the horizon, painting puff clouds pink. Have you ever seen the sunrise? How it changes the color of the sky. Sometimes it's sort of orangey and sometimes it's kind of pinky. It's quite special. A murmur of bees clinging to the lemon grove. Hum for their breakfast. Look how sunny it is now. It's like yellowy, like the bees. Hungry in their nest, fluffy dove chicks wriggle and cry out to be fed. They're hungry for their breakfast. I can tell you about the inspiration for these birds. We are really lucky and we have a swaying basket right outside our front door. And every year, two doves come and build a nest. It's normally a pretty rough nest. And they have chicks there and we can spy on them through the window in our door. And it's quite magical watching birds grow up, hatching from their eggs to become fledglings and then fly away. Sharp-nosed, bush-tailed fox slips beneath a garden shed to her hungry pup. Everyone's ready for breakfast. The sun is almost out, look. It's so much lighter than before. The sunlight dazzles, dripping gold from every tree. Morning has begun. Ta -da! The sun's up. Everyone's awake and happy and getting on with their day. At the end of this book, I made something called a glossary. A glossary is a list of words. So the words all appear somewhere in the book. And uh, so if you like finding out about new words or you want to discover what they mean, or if like me, you are a terrible speller and need to know how to spell them, you can look here and find out lots of interesting words. And one of my favorite words on here is crep secular. I just love saying that word, crep secular and it means mostly active at dusk or dawn. The other thing that's here is a little section called what is haiku? And it tells you a little bit about the history of haiku and how it came, they're Japanese poetry originally, and they have three lines, which you can see here, three lines, one, two, three, and they have 17 syllables or beats. So they have five syllables in the first, five syllables in the first one, and then seven syllables in the next one, and five in the next one. So this is when I'm writing poetry, I use my fingers. So I go 
the sun like that zools to make sure there's five beats dripping gold from every tree <laughs> seven beats morning has begun so that's a simple way of figuring out beats so if you fancy learning how to do haiku there's a section called how to haiku it just goes very simply through with some ideas in case you want to make your own poetry and if you do and if you want to send me some feel free i love reading people's poetry so that is my book morning sunshine and like kim said if you feel like you would like a copy of this pals have the book right now and i sent them some special book plates that have an owl that i drew and a haiku that goes around the edge and then my signature in gold in the middle so you can get those if you want a copy of the book next i'm going to read you another book that i love now, Morning Sunshine took place over a very small amount of time from just before sunrise to sunrise. So from dawn to sunrise. And that's why I used haiku, because haiku are really short poet poems and I wanted to just catch a short amount of time. In this book, A Stone Sat Still, it takes place over a really long amount of time. I mean, like, I think more than a person's lifetime kind of amount of time. And this beautiful book is written by Brandon Wenzel, and he is also the illustrator. So he wrote the book and he drew the pictures. And look, this book also has snails. A stone sat still. I love even the end pages have so much texture on them. It's just like, it just makes you want to go like that and touch it because it looks like it would feel nice. A Stone Sat Still by Brendan Wenzel. Let's see, make sure you can see that. A stone sat still with the water, grass and dirt and it was as it was where it was in the world. See the stone? Here is the stone. And there is the snail. And the stone was dark. Can you see how the stone kind of looks like a big animal? And it has a chipmunk eating a nut there. And this is a tree that looks like a tail. And the stone was bright, lit by the moonlight, the owl's eyes. And the stone was loud, like a seagull cracking a uh, shell, it looks like, against the stone, making a loud noise. And the stone was quiet. And Brendan's used really soft, quiet colours for this page. You can see the tree is now bigger than the stone. That's why I think it takes place over a long time. And it sat where it sat with the water, grass, and dirt. And it was as it was where it was in the world. You can see the snail up there still, and the tree towering over it. And the stone was rough. And Brandon's put all these zigzags to make it look rough. And the stone was soft. Sorry, the stone was smooth. And even though it's a porcupine, the illustrations make you want to stroke it. And the stone was green. You can see a green frog. Red. Can you see the lobster? Purple. There's an otter. And blue. There's a fox. And the stone was a pebble. So to this enormous moose looking down, the stone is small. And the stone was a hill to this little tiny insect looking up. Oh, it looks like an enormous stone. And the stone was a feel. And the stone was a smell. This animal can smell all the other animals. Brandon's drawn a fox and a moose and a snake. 
and the frog and the animal can smell them all. And it sat where it sat with the water, grass and dirt and it was as it was alone in the world. And the stone was the wild. The animal's looking quite worried. And the stone was a home. That's a very happy looking family, safe in their home. And the stone was a kitchen. And there's some otters, some fish, getting ready for their meal. And the stone was a throne. Very fierce looking cat-like animal on that. And the stone was a marker. See the geese flying over? That's their landmark. They know they're going in the right direction. And a map. And here's all the little squiggles, trails of ants. And a maze. And there's that busy snail and the snail trails. A danger. A haven, which means a safe place. A story, a stage. And the stone was a blink, and the stone was an age. And the stone was an island. See an island? It has an otter on it. And the stone was a wave. The water's gone over the stone and over the otter. Oh no, where is the stone? There are even no words. And all we have is a tiny clue, this little white highlighted wave. I think it's under there. Where do you think it is? And the stone was a memory. Like the owl can remember there used to be a stone there. Is it still there? Where did it go? And the stone was always. And in here, Brandon's drawn little images of the animals. So there's a frog and a fox and a deer all in the waves. Have you ever known such a place? As a parent and a child, maybe they discovered a place like that together. Maybe you have. Where with water, grass and dirt, it's a snail. This time it's a water snail. The stone is still there. This is kelp instead of grass, seaweed instead of grass. A stone sits still in the world. And that's the end of that beautiful book. Brandon also wrote, uh, they all saw a cat and hello, hello. And they're all wonderful books. So that's Stone Sat Still, and Kim is putting a link to this book and my book on the chat page. Now, the next thing I want to do with you is a fun facts quiz. So there were so many amazing facts that I found out when I was writing my book, but the book is, you know, picture books are only so long and all the facts would not fit in there. Not all the animals I wanted to do would fit in there either. So we're gonna do a fun facts quiz and it's called Three Truths and a Lie. So I'm gonna tell you four different things about three different animals. We're going to do hummingbirds, bees, and spiders. So what I'm going to do is read you four different things. And while I'm reading them to you, you have to decide which of those four things you think might be a lie. Are you ready? Okay, we're gonna start with hummingbirds. One, hummingbirds lay eggs the size of jelly beans. I should say not all hummingbirds, but some hummingbirds lay eggs the size of jelly beans. That's number one. Number two, Hummingbirds are the only birds that can fly backwards. Amazing, huh? Number three, hummingbirds have an amazing sense of smell. 
Number four, hummingbirds beat their wings between 50 and 200 times a second. Can you imagine how fast that is? So which of those didn't sound quite true? I'm gonna run through them quickly again. One, some hum hummingbirds lay eggs the size of jelly beans. Two, hummingbirds are the only birds that can fly backwards. Or is it three, hummingbirds have an amazing sense of smell. Or is it four, they can beat their wings between 50 and 200 times a second. Ready for the answer? Did you choose one, two, three, or four? The lie is number three. Hummingbirds do not have amazing sense of smell. In fact, hummingbirds can't smell at all. Imagine how bizarre that must be. All right, how did you do? Next, we're going on to bees. What do you know about bees? I have to tell you, I'm wearing my bee earrings today because I love bees so much. Right, ready for the four things? Which one do you think is not true? Number one, the queen lays up to 800 eggs a day. Or number two, it takes two million flowers to produce one pound of honey. Or number three, bees can fly up to 15 miles per hour. That's when you go zoom, zoom, and you see them in the flowers. Or number four, bees have been making honey for over 10 million years. Bees have been around a long, long time. Which one do you think is not true? I'll go through them very quickly again. One, the queen bee lays over 500 eggs a day. Two, it takes two million flowers to produce one pound of honey. Three, bees can fly up to 15 miles per hour. Or four, bees have been making honey for over 10 million years. Which one do you think is not true? Ready for the answer? It's number one. Queen bees actually lay 2,000 eggs a day. No wonder they don't do anything else but lay eggs and eat. That's exhausting. Ready for spiders now? This is the last one. How are you doing? I bet you get this one right. Spider facts. Number one, spider rain is a real thing. It has rained spiders before. Imagine that. Number two, the oldest living spider lived to 43 and then it died from a wasp sting. Number three, some spiders have telescopic eyes, which means their eyes can kind of go so that they can zoom in and zoom back on different things. Number four, climate change has made some spiders smaller. Which one do you think is not true? Let me read them through quickly again. Number one, spider rain is a real thing. Number two, the oldest living spider lived to be 43 and then died from a wasp sting. Number three, some spiders have telescopic vision. Or number four, climate change is making spiders smaller. The answer is climate change is not making spiders smaller. Climate change is making spiders bigger. Imagine, I actually don't mind. I actually love spiders. I think they're fascinating. Now, we talked about spiders and snails. Snails appeared in both books. Spiders appear in my book. On my website, which is also in the chat line, keelyparrot.com, if you want to, you can find, if you go to the resources, you can download this nature notebook for yourself. It's a PDF and you just print it out. It comes out in one sheet of paper and then you can fold it up and it becomes your own nature notebook. So you can make little, little notes of all the animals and things around where you live if you want to. And then if you really want to, you can take all those notes and make them into haikus. 
Um, the other thing that's on there is how to make snails and how to make spiders out of paper bag handles. So they're fun and easy and quick to do and you can make your own crowd of snails. I'm not sure what a big gathering of snails is called. Maybe it's a slime of snails. Maybe it's a scuttle of spiders. Well, that's been my presentation for this morning. It is so lovely to be here and thank you for joining me. Hi, Kim. Hi again. Thank you so much, Keely. And thank you all for joining us for this morning's story time. Um, as Keely mentioned, I've put the book links in the chat. And please be sure to check out our lineup of upcoming author events, including our story time next week with uh, The Tiny Chef. We look forward to seeing you at another event soon. Thank you so much, Keely. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful day, too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.